Man, these Tomlin bases are super cool. And one of the coolest thing about them is the nut width it happens to be the same as a standard guitar, which means that you can take this and make it into this. What this is is a uh, 30 inch conversion baritone guitar where I took the Tomlin bass and installed different pickups, changed the bridge, and added a couple of strings to it. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. For this project, you're gonna need a working surface you can clamp stuff to, drawing materials, soft surface to protect the paint job, measurement and drawing tools, a thin bladed saw like a jig, coping, or scroll saw, a router or a chisel and hammer if you want to do it the old-fashioned way. The most used tool in this project is the drill and for that it's important to have a brad point drill bits and step drills, a razor, a file, and a flush cut saw like this Japanese Ryoba. For consumables, you're gonna need an 18 millimeter dowel, hardware like pickups, tuners, nut, and bridge, and optionally you might want to replace the pick guard with something different. Paint and clear coat, and other paint accessories like a decal and masking tape, sanding block. I was actually not using this one, but rather just a piece of wood that was flat on the bottom and sides, as well as sandpapers, a variety of grit. I also used these polishing pads and polish, and optionally some fretwork tools like these files and fret rocker and fret polishing pads. So the project begins with disassembling the whole guitar and laying out the body. We're going to tape off the surface around the bridge before I took it off. That's what that rectangle of tape is there. And I've got another bit of tape on the top and bottom of it, so of the pickup here, so that I can mark exactly the position of where it is. I'm using also the pre-existing pocket for where the uh, pickup was, the jazz bass pickup was. And this jazz master pickup matches the size of it perfectly. So here we're just routing out the pocket. And checking to make sure that we're not going too far and that it's, it's actually working out the way it's intended. And here are the little slots for the screws. Now we've got that set up, we're marking out the pick guard to get out a template for the pick guard material. And here we are using the template that we already made to cut out the shape of the pick guard on the pick guard material itself. You can either use a bandsaw or just a simple jigsaw if that's all you've got. Or even a coping saw or a scroll saw works perfectly fine with this. It's not a very thick material, so definitely don't need a bandsaw to do this. And here we are routing to the edge of the template and creating a nice chamfered edge. This isn't really the ideal way of doing this, I realize. I got a little bit of chatter, as you can hear, in the router, and ended up having to fix one or two spots, and one of them I just went ahead and left because it was it would have been quite a large surface to repair. So if you're like me and you don't have a drill press, we're going to go ahead and make a guide here to be able to drill perpendicular holes to the surface without having to worry about it. We're measuring out the length of the tuning keys and marking out their locations on a mocked up headstock. This is why we needed pencil and paper in order to be able to kind of get an idea of where this thing is. All I'm using here is just some scrap plywood that I found. Uh, it's about the right thickness, it's not perfect, it's also not very critical that it's perfect. Uh, we're just getting an idea of where this stuff sits so that we can kind of come up with an idea 
that we can continue modifying until we're happy. The guitar you hear in the background is my crappy playing using only the neck pickup, which is a bridge pickup of a bare knuckles mother's milk single coil. So here we're using the aforementioned pencil and paper to trace around the headstock and then line up where all the string locations are. With this information, we can have a pretty good idea of where the tuning keys should go to make kind of a uniform look. Planning is really important in getting a nice looking finished product. If you don't plan, um, it's really hard to predict what the outcome is going to be. It's, it's hard to get what's in your head to come out in reality. So make sure you plan all this stuff out. <laughs> now you can kind of see that they're distributed a little bit unevenly. So it would be nicer to get some kind of parallelism or a little bit less parallelism so that it doesn't look quite so weird right there. It's kind of poorly placed. So now we're moving them and trying to optimize the positioning just to make it look nicer. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it out on this piece of maple that I've cut to practice on first before I drill on the real thing. And I even practiced the hole first to see what drilling with that brad point would do. Ooh. And when you drill with it to the full diameter at one go, it doesn't really create a nice looking result. So I'm gonna switch over and do this with a smaller drill first, and then drill it with a bigger drill, and then use a step drill and look at the difference in the result. Much cleaner. So, now we're gonna go down with the same methodology. Drilling with a small diameter first, then larger, and then popping in the step drill and increasing up to the full size. And there it is. So I'm not very satisfied with the placement of this one so close to the edge, and this one's too close to the edge too. I think I'm gonna move this in three millimeters, this one in two millimeters, and this one probably two millimeters as well, because this one's pretty far in, so I think it would make it look a little bit more consistent if I had this one in a little bit. So two, two, and three. So now let's go try to do the real one. So here I am marking the real headstock, center positions of each, and I'm going to go ahead and move them the way I intended to. And I'm marking them again to show where the new center is going to be. I drilled it out and now I'm painting. It just so happened that my wife ordered a bit of luggage and the box for it arrived uh, just in time for me to use it as a miniature paint booth. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend <laughs> this method, but if you only have a table and a balcony to paint on, uh, showing you that you can also do this method and get good results with it. I did one coat and then I did a second coat and probably three or four, maybe even five coats, I'm not really sure. I was trying to cover up some imperfections in the in the woods there where the there was a bit of unevenness. It didn't work on 
obviously, so I went and uh, filled them up, uh, filled in the gaps with uh, a bit of super glue, and I'm coming back here and sanding it flat again, which means I also have to repaint it again. After spraying with the final coats with the black, I leveled the paint job again and applied the decal. As you can see, it's quite finicky. You've got to take the back off first, and then you've got to take off the front after you've uh, applied it nice and evenly and got all the air bubbles out of it. That's what I'm using a spatula for. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And then clear coat over that. And my son just couldn't resist sticking his finger in the wet paint and leaving this mark there, which I struggled to um, flat sand yeah. out, so I had to clear coat over it a few more times <laughs> after sanding it. <laughs> and I commissioned my daughter to help me with this flat sanding. There you can see me using the actual yeah. blocks that I talked about earlier, using the polishing tools and compounds, checking, leveling, and polishing the frets in. I had to drill out the low E side because the string was just too fat for this bridge. And now I put this ruler here from the nut, measured out to the 12th fret. There you can see it's 381. And that comes out to a position of 762 for the full scale length. I marked that out. I've got the two, the low and the E, sorry, the low and the high strings um, here to position the bridge and also position the pickup, which will be uh, mounted in the pick guard. Uh, but I forgot to show that. So there it is, me marking its actual uh, position. First I drilled the holes to, to get it perfectly oriented. But yeah, now go ahead and drill the pocket out. And I sawed it away and then went over it with a file to file back to the line and make room for it. Also, during the setup process there with the two strings, I noticed that the strings were too low. So I had to make this spacer, which will go under the bridge. And since it's made of metal, it will also help shield it. Um, it'll conduct electricity there so that um, it's grounded between the bridge and the electronics. And it sits right underneath the bridge like that. And I also noticed that this little piece there hmm, it needs to be routed away. So I went and I routed it out. And now I'm applying the electrical shielding paint and wiring the guitar up. Well, I think you've got a pretty good idea about the neck pickup by now. At least uh, the clean sound of it. So how about a little bit about the bridge? It is... The, from the Jazzmaster line of the Creamery pickups, it's called the Domino, which is a wide range pickup. And um, I want to thank you for sticking around this long and watching the video, and I hope it helps. Here's my cover of the new Florence tune, Cornucopia, using only the bridge pickup. <laughs>